Uh, I just want to pick up on something Lainey said in her communion, um, just to share with you. Um, the, uh, when she mentioned about uh, the blood being put on the lintels and the doorposts of the homes, and um, you know, which is all connected in with the uh, Passover story. And uh, you know, if I'm, um, I remember I've done, prayed this a few times, but uh, one time in particular I remember I, I prayed when I was, I was feeling unwell. I thought I was going to be sick. And um, I actually prayed, it just came to me to pray, Lord, let this sickness pass over. And I just saw the blood of Jesus on my own life. And, um, and sure enough, straight away, I felt better. Straight away, I, was, I felt healed. I knew I, I was heading, I knew I was heading into a you know, place of sickness. But um, so it's just, it's a powerful thing. The blood of Jesus, it's powerful. And uh, I'm not going to sing about it, Lainey. I think you did actually an incredible job. But um, <laughs> it would be a downward spiral for me to get going in song. Anyway. Um, I want to share with you, you know, if, just something that happened a, a couple of weeks ago uh, at, at Seacoast Church. Uh, we had um, we had a morning. Some, you know, mornings can be different in church, and you know, God does things in different ways. And we had a particularly uh, a morning where it was there were the prophetic. Prophetic was really powerful uh, in our midst, and it came, it came following the worship and, and all of that. It was it was a powerful time, and um, I just want to share with you this morning. Um, there was a couple of words that came during that morning. One was shared on the morning, and then the un- another one was shared just personally with Venice and I later. Now, I, I, I don't believe this is actually for, for the church generally, but I really do believe it's for, certainly for Seacoast, and I believe it's for a rise, because, you know, we're, uh, we're, we're two churches that are very much still connected in spirit um, in, as the body of Christ. So the word simply began. It's not... It's not um, complicated it's very simple but it's began when this person said we have crossed over now I just want to pause right there because I hear so many prophetic words as I'm sure you do as well that that say the season is coming or we're about to enter into this or that or the breakthrough is on its way and we often get these words, these prophetic words, that it's like it's just over the hill, it's just coming, it's hard now, you're weary now, but the breakthrough is just around the corner. But praise God, this word says, we have already crossed over. And I believe that to be true. We are already in the land that God has promised us. And that's certainly true for you guys here at Arise Church. You are, God has, you have crossed over here, right here, into this place. And now it's, but now, it's up to you to plant yourselves here in this land, in this season, in this place of, of dominion spiritually, to position yourselves in what God is already doing. So back to the prophetic word, God says, lift off the limitations. Don't be enslaved by things that have held you back in the past. The shackles that have held you that have held you back, are broken off. They're not going to be. They are broken off. So step into the promises of God. And it finishes up by saying, boldly break out into all that God has for you. And I believe this is a word for Arise Church this morning. So that's basically a summary of the word that came. You know, this, there is something, I believe, there's something fresh in the air. And it's not just because we've stepped into a new year. Um, don't be discouraged by whatever you may have been feeling or experiencing personally. Um, you know, I, I believe it's the time to embrace this new day with fresh eyes and with fresh vision. So I, I guess my word is a word of encouragement to you as a church this morning. The mercies of God are new every morning. And, and as we embrace God's word and encouragement, our feelings will come into line. Some of, you, um, some of you may have also heard of Pastors Bruce and Terry Connell um, from Kununurra. Uh, they, they have been locals here, but now have been over, over in Western Australia for some time. And they're friends of ours from our Uniting Church days, um, well over a quarter of a century ago, which makes me sound really old. Um, but Bruce and Terry are now INC pastors in Kununurra. Well, they just happen to be at Seacoast Church this particular Sunday when this prophetic word was shared. And Terry 
also received a word that morning as well, and, and she shared it with us later in the week. And um, so the prophetic was flowing strongly, uh, and which was really exciting. So Terry said that, she said that those who have stepped, um, stepped out in this previous year just gone to bless and to glorify God's name, um, using the gifts of the Spirit, gifts of healing, discernment, words of knowledge, uh, God says he will give a double portion to see twice as much fruit when these gifts are used this year. Now, that's good in itself, but there's more. She says, and for those who are willing now, if you're willing to step out this year, uh, those of you who have felt held back for whatever reason in the past, God is also releasing a double portion upon your lives as well. He will reward those who are willing to step out by faith because he loves faith. So be encouraged, lay down your fears, uh, your hesitations, and step out into the kingdom this year. She also believes that there is an anointing um, for activation of these gifts um, in, this, in this time uh, in our lives. And the double portion comes as we, are we, as we are activated in the spirit. So I want to pray over you guys, if, if you're happy with that, for, for that activation um, to, to come upon, upon this church and upon your lives uh, when I'm at the close of this message. Um, you know, for those of you who feel that this is a word that God's speaking to you personally, that now is the time, now is the time to see increased fruitfulness and an increased anointing upon your lives. I believe these are exciting words. And, and I'm excited for this church. I'm excited for the future of Arise Church. You know, God's hand is upon this church, and that has been proven and, and shown um, many times already to this point. So my message today is all about stirring ourselves up, but also stirring one another up in our faith, you know, with courage, with boldness, to be the church for right now, for 2023, in this land that God has already given us. And I want to see, I want to see Arise grow. I want to see Arise mature to walk in the reality of who she already is, to express the reality of who you are already as the people of God. You know, the, the, the word says, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory. You carry Christ within you. You carry the fullness of God on the inside of you. Like, you could never work that out with your mind. This is something you capture in the spirit. Let this year be a year of God's glory manifesting in and through you, his church. Wouldn't that be great? Wouldn't that be awesome? Let's believe for that. And I say us because, you know, I feel that, you know, I'm more than just a guest speaker here um, or a visiting ministry. Vanessa and I are both invested into this church. Our lives have been and continue to be sown into this church. And the truth is, you know, your lives... Your, your spiritual gifts, the manifestation of God's glory in and through you, it, you know, it's never about you. It's always about others. It's always about others. So this morning, Hebrews 10 is our, pretty much our go-to summary of, of what I want to share with you, but particularly these, um, these two sets of verses from Hebrews 10. first one is uh, verses 23 to 25. It says, Let us hold fast the confession of our hope, Without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works, not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. So, just a couple of things here I want to share before I go on to the, the next couple of verses. You know, my focus this morning really is about where it says, let us consider one another to stir up love and good works, exhorting one another as the day of, um, of Christ's return approaches. And so if we go to that previous verse, verse 23, we see why we are called to stir one another up. Um, the reason is because we hold fast to the confession of our faith that he who promised is faithful. God is faithful. It's not about, you know, you being the perfect person or the perfect Christian, but God is faithful if you're willing to allow him to work through you. And because God is faithful, we can then boldly stir one another up to love and good works. 
And he promises to be faithful to, to be with us, to walk with us, and, and um, as we encourage one another to step out. And this one another is, is all of you guys. In this instance, he's not talking about anyone out there. He's talking about the church. Build yourselves up. Stir one another up. Each of you are the others that this, these verses are talking about. And I know many of, you, um, many of you in this place are already highly motivated. I know that. But this word is about stirring up those around you. Stir up one another. And for those that you see serving and, and you know, um, doing the things that God's called them to do, encourage them. Encourage them to go even further. It's, you know, this, we need to stir one another up. Secondly, um, in verse 35, it says, Therefore do not cast away your confidence, which has great reward. And the prophetic word says it has a double portion reward. For you have need of endurance. So that after you have done the will of God, you may receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he is coming, uh, and he who is coming will come and will not tarry. So Jesus is coming. Let's never lose sight of that incredible truth. I, I, it's something that uh, I love to talk about, but it's also like something I love to hear. And, you know, I think I might have shared with you before that. A long time ago, Venice and I were attracted to the Seventh-day Adventist church because all they would talk about is the second coming of Jesus. And, um, you know, I don't believe we were meant to, to get, actually be locked in there. I believe God led us on a different path. But, you know, the, we need to be talking more and more about the fact that Jesus is coming back. It says, now the just shall live by faith. Um, you know, we live by faith, not by what our natural eyes see, but with the eyes of the Spirit, what we discern what we, what we perceive spiritually. And if anyone draws back, my soul has no pleasure in him. But we are not of those who draw back to perdition, but of those who believe to the saving of the soul. That's who we are. Another thing that stands out to me here is the use of certain words in Hebrews 10. It says, hold fast the confession. Do not cast away your confidence. You have need of endurance. You know, this is not a journey for the faint-hearted. And that's exactly why we need to be doing this together. We need each other's encouragement. We need each other's exhortation. We need to be part of this community of faith so that we have opportunity to stir one another up and to, to love and good works. The Christian walk, the walk of faith, it's not for lone rangers. When Jesus and the apostles gathered the church together, they knew from the very beginning the vital importance of being the body together. And I know that you know, there are times when, when we all go through seasons and we feel you know, it's, it's difficult to hold fast, to endure. Times when we just feel like casting away what little confidence we still have. But these are the very moments that we need to stay connected. This is why we need one another to position ourselves within the body of Christ, the church. This is a safe haven. And now God is saying it's also a powerhouse. And as much as, you know, you're, you're all different. I know a lot of you. You're all different. You have different personalities. You've got different giftings, different abilities. You, you know, walking through different stages of life and, and, and stages of Christian maturity. And that's actually what makes it all work. I believe there's a, there's a revelation to be had about what the body of Christ really is and what it really means. We are a body together. It's summed up, summed up nicely in 1 Corinthians 12. It says, If the foot should say, Because I am not a hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where would be the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where would be the smelling? But now God has set the members. God has set the members. Each one of them in the body, just as he pleased. I love that. I love it that God sets the members together. He does it as he pleases. 
And that's our confidence. That's where our faith lies, that he has done this. He has gathered you guys together as a Rise Church in Lismore. And you're only just, just the beginning. You know, when, even when others in the body make us feel uncomfortable, um, they might rub us up the wrong way, you know, like sandpaper. Um, they might see things differently. They might have different opinions, different ideas about things. What's God really doing? He's doing something in us. When somebody, you know, sometimes we feel challenged. We feel, we even feel offended. I say, good. Be offended. We need to be offended at times because God is changing us, transforming us, molding us into the image of his son. And sometimes he he uses offences, offence, to do that because we have to work through it. We have to deal with it. And, um, and hopefully, at the, at the same time, become more Christ-like in our response. And overcoming and working through these things, I believe, does change us for the better. You are all part of the one body. I don't know how well you know each other. I don't know how well you relate to one another. But the truth is, you are one body. You all, have, you all have a right to be here. And not only that, you all need to be here for one another. He's teaching us what love really is. And as we go to the end of chapter 12 and then over into the next chapter, 1 Corinthians 13, it's all about love and it's all about the gifts of the Spirit working together. And without, I'm not going to read it all, but he's, he's saying that he has appointed various roles, various anointings within the body, You know, there are apostles and prophets and teachers and workers of miracles and healings and helps and administrations and varieties of tongues, all different giftings. And the overarching, overarching all of that, it says in verse 13, and now abide faith, hope and love. And the greatest of these, of course, is love. Okay, so a little summary. What have I been saying up till now? We have crossed over. Don't be in that place of saying, God, take us in, you know, lead us into the promised land. You know, help us get across this desert, this place of dryness. It's not, God is saying, you are there. You're already in there. We are positioned right now to step out and to walk in the giftings and the anointings that God has placed on each one of our lives. There will be different gifts and abilities. We are anointed for various callings and good works as we look to bless and bring glory to God. We are to consider one another. Why? To to stir up love and good works, exhorting one another. Stay confident. You need to endure. Make a choice to live by faith and not by sight. We are the body body of Christ together. In fact, he set us where he has pleased, where it's pleased him. Each one of you right here, just as he pleases. And in it all, faith, hope and love prevail. Which now turns our attention just to the end of um, that verse 24 where it says, let us consider one another. Um, But it says to consider one another to stir up love and good works. You know, there are heaps of scriptures that speak about good works in the Bible. But I want to look at what James has to say. And I'll warn you, James is brutal. If you've read much of James, it's, he's straight down the line, black and white, and sometimes brutal. So there's no fluffing around the, around the edges. And firstly, firstly, before I read this um, scripture, uh, let me be clear that good works alone never saved anyone. There are many people doing amazing things for others. There are lots of awesome community groups, charities, organisations that, that serve locally, you know, around the world, third world countries, they do it out of love and they do it out of compassion for others and good on them. But good works alone do not earn us a place in eternity. Faith in Jesus Christ does that. But James is he's clearly saying here that faith and love for Christ will automatically lead us to do good works. <clears throat> the two belong together. But he even goes further than that. Listen to what he says. James 2, 14 to 17. What does it profit, my brethren, 
If someone says he has faith but does not have works, can faith save him? I just think that's a really interesting question right there. Can faith save him? Well, we know by faith we are saved. But he's trying to make a point. If a brother or sister is naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you says to them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, but you do not give them the things which are needed for the body, what does it profit? Thus also faith by itself, if it does not have works, is dead. When I read that, it's like, whoa. Verse 18, but someone will say, you have faith and I have works. Show me your faith without your works and I will show you my faith by my works. You believe that there is one God, you do well, even the demons believe. And do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? So do you know what dead means here? It means dead. It, it actually comes from a word, necros, and which is you know, our medical term, necrosis, which means death, comes from the same root word. Um, so as usual, James doesn't beat around the bush. According to Strong's Concordance, that word dead means spiritually dead. It means destitute of life. Inactive as respects to doing right. Destitute of force or power, inactive, inoperative. When it boils down to it, faith and love for God must include love for others. They are the two greatest commandments. Love God, love others. And we know that love is a doing word. Love is expressed in action. Now, when you are kind, compassionate, caring, loving, if it's real, it will be expressed by doing good, good works. And James is basically saying, if, if your faith and love don't lead you to doing something good for others, then is it real? Is it real faith? Not only does he say is it, is it, it's not real, he says it's dead. And, and what a tragic thing it would be to have dead faith. The scripture says... I will live by faith. Genuine faith is about life. It's about you know, genuine faith being brought to, to life for the sake of others. And I want to ask you this morning, what is it that causes your faith to bring about life in others? Because that's what good works will do. So as we flow further into this new year, it's a great time to consider one another. Think about others, particularly others in the body of Christ. Consider how you can also stir up others um, who are in the body to encourage, to spur them on in doing good things, the good things that God has called them to do. Good works will involve serving with your gifts, serving with spiritual abilities, you know, God-given abilities, spiritual gifts and natural ones. Start right here in God's house, in, with God's people. Because Galatians 6, 9 to 10 says, Let us not grow weary while doing good, for in due season we will reap and not lose heart. Therefore, we have, if, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all, especially to those who are of the household of faith. You know, an, evangel, an evangelist would probably like that to read, you know, do good to all, especially to the people out there in our community. But it doesn't say that. Let's begin right here. Some might say, it is out there in the world. That's where we need to make a difference. Yes, we do. Of course we do. But let's not underestimate the power of building a caring, loving, giving, serving church, community here, the body of Christ, right here. After all, Jesus says to his disciples in John 13, A new commandment I give to you, that you love one another as I have loved you, that you also love one another. By this all will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. Those pe people out there will know the love of God because of how much you love one another. This morning I want to make room um, for, for all of us to open our hearts, our spirits, to receive an impartation, an activation of your spiritual gifts. 
um, including even an activation of your heart to desire to step further into the call of God upon your life. Paul says to the church in Rome, in um, Romans 1, he says, for, for I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift, that you may be established. That is, that I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. So set yourself to be established more and more in, in 2023. Many, many people in our world are far from established in life. You know that many are tossed around, tossed to and fro by every wind that, that blows across them. But let us be established. And let others around us be established in Christ through our love and good works, our expression of spiritual gifts. I'm going to invite you to stand in a moment and, and to open yourselves to God's spirit, to move upon you as I pray. I wonder if the musicians could come. You know, there are very, various gifts that I believe God would want to release within us this morning. And the scripture reveals, you know, many of what these spiritual gifts are. In 1 Corinthians 12, it, it uh, mentions the word of wisdom, word of knowledge, faith, healings, working of miracles, prophecy, discerning of spirits, different kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. And then in Romans 12, we find the spiritual gifts of ministry, teaching, exhortation, giving, leadership, and mercy. Then there are the spiritual gifts or anointings upon our lives, you know, for those who are called to the office or the role of, of being um, apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. So there are many things that God would want to, I believe, stir up within us or in some way activate within us this morning. And as I pray, I want you to be expectant. Open your heart. God is not calling you to do anything except what he has already equipped you for and the things that he already has written in his book, things that he has already planned to be established in your life. And Jesus said, you know, in uh, Matthew 11, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So don't think that God's going to be calling you to something that is just so overwhelming you're not going to be able to cope with. If we walk in what God has planned for our own lives, it'll be a blessing. It'll be a blessing to others around us, but it'll be a blessing to us. There is great reward for serving others with your gifts. So I want to invite you all to, just to stand, if you're able. Now, I know I'm, I'm not your pastor, um, but I am a pastor. And I'm, I believe at this stage in my life, I'm a father in the faith. And I'm a father, I believe, in this movement of INC. So from that place... I want to pray for you this morning. Just that the Holy Spirit, God would do what He wants to do within your life. I'm not putting anything on you personally, but I believe the Holy Spirit wants to stir your heart and spirit this morning. So we say, come Holy Spirit. Fill the hearts of your faithful people here. By your Spirit, stir us up. Stir each one of us up to love and good works. But Lord, place within us that desire to stir up the others around us, those ones that are part of this body of Christ. We are the church together. We are the body together. Lord, that you would, that we would be encouraged, empowered, you know, even have boldness to stir one another up to love and good works but I pray Lord God I believe that you are saying this morning that Holy Spirit you want to activate to stir up our own spiritual gifts and I just pray right now Lord God that you would activate us Lord that you would bring forth those, those spiritual gifts within our lives that you have call, called us to use not for ourselves but for your glory 
The gifts that you've given us are always for others. It's not for our own glory. It's not that we can stand in pride and say, look at who I am. It's nothing like that. Father, that, but we would, we would know, we would have a word in season. We would you know, be able to see things in the spirit. We would be able to pray for people and they would be healed. Lord, we would release your anointing upon people's lives and, and they would, there would be miracles before us. Lord, we want to be that church. We want to be your church in this year, 2023. Lord, because you are current, coming back and you will not tarry. When it happens, it'll be instant, Father. And we want to be ready and we want to be walking in and, and you know, moving in the power of God, the power of the Spirit. Lord, releasing those spiritual gifts time and time again, day after day, even in our ordinary everyday life that we would be blessing others and bringing glory to your name. So, Father, activate us this morning. Lord, release and stir within us those, those, those giftings and desires. Father, the desire in our heart to be used by you, that we just wouldn't be thinking we want a nice, quiet, lovely life, but, Lord God, that you would bring us to that place of courage and boldness to be who we are. It's Christ in us the hope of glory. You have filled us with all the fullness of God. You have positioned us already in the land of promise. We have crossed over already. Now it's up to us, Lord God, to position ourselves and to plant ourselves exactly where you want us to be. And now is the time. This is the day that the Lord has made in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. God bless you all.